Hi and welcome back to this video series on object-oriented programming in Python. In the previous videos we learned what an object is, we learned about how to create them, how to use class inheritance and how to uh, use abstract methods to help build an interface for various objects. Um, in this lesson we're going to be looking at a topic called polymorphism. Now, there's different ways of doing polymorphism and Python isn't necessarily always great at doing polymorphism and there are some workarounds so I'm going to talk you through some of those right now. First example of polymorphism though is uh, being able to call the same function name and depending on the context um, and the uh, object that it's associated with, Python will know which version of the functional method to call. So for example, here I have got uh, a dog class that has a method called speak. I've also got a cat class that has a method called speak. Um, and I can call here dog.speak and it, Python knows which version of the speak method to call because it's associated to the dog class. Likewise with the cat, when I do cat.speak, it knows which version of speak to call. So if I was to run this, now you should see uh, woof and meow. All right, so woof and meow. That's the first example of um, polymorphism in action. There are other types of polymorphism that we can apply to this as well. Um, and I'm going to basically create some new um, methods within each of the uh, classes themselves. So I'm going to use this special thing called um, dispatch, a special decorator, which comes from multiple dispatch. So for multiple dispatch, import dispatch. Um, so for this one, I'm going to say def and let's go with action and I think I'm going to do if it has a string I'm going to just a single string being passed in I'm going to return something like um, the uh, oh I should actually write that here sorry the string is there and the action is going to be equal to self and um, let's just call it the the action itself Oh, let's not call it action because that's the thing with function. Let's go with um, the uh, behavior. Okay, so I'm going to say um, the dog has just, and then I'll put in the behavior here. Okay. Now let's do another one. If I pass in two, two. Um, actions so two strings dispatch i'm going to pass in one string and another string i'm going to call this action as well self i'm going to call it behavior and um let's call it the act okay or no the result okay um let's go return we're going to return an F string as well. The dog has just behavior and the outcome is the result. Okay. So we can just hide this cat class at the moment. So I've got two methods with the same name here. Let's uh, look at it in action. Okay, so um, let's do print dog. So that's the name of our dog object here. So dog dot uh, action, and we're going to pass in just one thing, just one behavior. So let's do bark. So uh, let's do barked. That's the action. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing again, but print dog dot action. But now I'm going to pass in two different behaviors. So the dog has, um, let's pass in scratch the uh, floor. I don't know how, no, let's, what do dogs do? They eat slippers, don't they? Stupid dogs. They eat slippers. Uh, so the dog has just eaten the slippers. And the outcome is an un happy owner. All right, so let's run this. And, oh yeah, I always do that. 
always I end up putting the colons at the end of my uh, dispatches. You don't need to do that. And it was even warning me. Look at that. Didn't do it on that first one. I did it on that one, and it was warning me with a red mark. Again, I always keep the errors in so you can see what, <laughs> what's going wrong. There you go. Right, so uh, the dog has just barked, and the dog has just eaten the slippers, and the outcome is an unhappy owner. Both of those are examples of polymorphism. Puh, start that one again. Both of those are examples of polymorphism in action. Okay. Um, the first one, again, was knowing which version of a method to call depending on the context. So we've got dog.speak and cat.speak. The other one was within the function, uh, within the class itself, calling the right method depending on what was being passed into it. In the first one, we had if there was just a single string being passed into action, it would call this method. Uh, another version was this. Right, I'm going to just show you uh, how to achieve that without using multiple dispatch. So uh, I'm going to call in the app, in the cat uh, method a version called action. No, I'm not going to call dispatch this time. Uh, I'm going to have behavior and I'm going to have uh, the result. And I'm going to set this result with a default value of none. Okay, so uh, if the result is equal to none, I'm just going to return the same thing here, but I'm going to use um, the cat. Okay, so if the result is equal to none, I'm just returning that. Else, I'm going to return the same thing here, but again, change the dog to cat. Okay, um, so you can see I'm using default values here to kind of replicate the same thing. I prefer using multiple dispatch. I think it's just easier to understand. It's a bit neater and you can sort of build upon it a little bit more easily. Um, but if you don't want to rely on the uh, multiple dispatch, you can do it as I am with the cat. So let's just double check how this works. Um, let's print those two actions. This time we're going to do cat. Uh, and the cat has um, meowed. And the cat has uh, scratched the sofa. And we're going to have uh, the result is a poorer owner because they have to buy a new sofa. All right, so let's just run that. And there you go. The cat has meowed and the cat has just scratched the sofa and the outcome is a poorer owner. Two methods of achieving the same thing. Uh, one using multiple dispatch, the other one uh, basically using the default values to help you uh, determine whether something has been included or not in uh, a past argument.